all disjointed, we are not going to win the game. But if we go with one voice and say, this is what we want, take it or leave it, these guys will act. Okay. In detail, thank you, Mr. Elijah Enoko. Just to balance it, let's end with you. Now, uh, Dr. Eddie Eric, uh, I would like that you end by answering these questions. We have heard all the analysis uh, presented by uh, all the, the, the panel of experts. So the question is, and in your analysis, you made mention uh, of the BRICS being uh, actually an exemplary organization uh, that can come to change things around for Africa, especially as the world is moving towards multipolarism. So now, in your perspective, uh, what can the BRICS offer in uh, uh, especially in line with the financial independence of African states. Clarice, I believe the first thing that the BRICS uh, should offer before even talking about you know, financial states is uh, the ways in which the West has related to Africa. Okay. Everything boils down to one thing. Has the West or does the West consider Africans as human beings or as people worthy. I live in the United States and we cannot shy away from those things. As long as, as Walter Rodney said, you have a slavery or you have not looking at people as human beings to the same state or as you are, it is the bottom line. If the Brits shy away from that kind of a vision, at least around the table, you will have a people who are not just decorating, but you are people, you have a people who will be truly or uh, and effectively included in decision making. That's, I believe, is one process. Second thing that can be pushed in and there is also the African health states, you know, what that are around those tables. Look at us as equal partners, at least at that level. Second thing. When you talk about the finances, Africa does need uh, financial assistance. We talk about the BRICS. China is doing something about you know, what the Belt Road and the quite a number of things. But if we scrutinize very well, Professor Elijah, uh, my brother Elijah you know, uh, uh, lectured us last time on that, the terms of the loans that China is uh, awarding African countries or some countries may not be optimum may not be the best thing. We have seen China, for loan purposes or loan reason for lack of repayment, uh, threatening to seize the airports of the country, which is the most uh, uh, grotesque and, uh, and, and the weird thing I've ever seen because an airport is part of the security apparatus and the, the, uh, the sovereignty of the country, the grandeur of the country. For China to threaten to seize that airport, it means what it means. But all that tied down to, again, the type of uh, uh, cooperation or treatment uh, treat, uh, treaties that, that were signed in there. So the BRICS should also shy away uh, from that one. And then the last thing, listen, one of the things that is also killing in terms of uh, foreign direct uh, investment or any other, let's look at the illicit financial flows. Here's the one thing that you know what the uh, BRICS maybe can also pay attention to. And then finally, is to look at uh, what uh, my brother Elijah called earlier, the priorities. I will replace the word priorities with interests. Sometimes Africans, we are afraid of using that word. And I'm not talking about, you know, Elijah, but, you know, uh, our watchers. We need to be selfish. The problem with Africans, we are not selfish. We are too good. And as people say in French, you cannot be born one time, uh, two times. If you are born one time is enough. If you are born two times, you become bonbon. And if uh, Elijah understands what bonbon is, bonbon means uh, sweeties. And people will suck it to their advantage. We need to be a little bit selfish. Not among ourselves to uh, preserve a power or to capture state power, but we need to be selfish to put the interest of Africa on the table first and foremost before a thing. This is what should be done around the BRICS table, and I believe it will bring what you have called, uh, Clarissa, the change of a narrative. Okay. The change of narrative. 
the change of narrative because geopolitics is also language. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. A.D. Eric, for the great insight. I want to 